So we're told in this question, the unit vectors i and j are due east and north respectively. We're given two position vectors that a stone slides between, and that takes four seconds. So we're starting at position vector a. So position vector a is minus 24, minus 10. And then position vector b is 12, 5. And then we're told the particle is moving in a straight line at a constant speed. We're trying to prove that the stone passes through O. So let's draw this out. So let's say we have here is position vector A, or here is, here is point A, and then here is point B. And then O would be, let's say, somewhere over here. So then let's work out what AO is. AO is this vector. That would be the negative of O to A, which would be 24, 10. And we know that O to B from above is just 12, 5. So if you look at these two vectors, we can see that A to O is two lots of O to B. If you times this by 2, you end up with 24, 10. So that means that A to O, this vector from A to O, is parallel to O to B. And the fact that a to o is a positive scalar multiple of o to b means that these two vectors, a to o and o to b, are in the same direction as one another. And that's actually important to proving that the stone passes through o. Let's assume a scenario where we had, let's say, a to o is equal to negative two lots of o to b. So what would this look like? Well, here is a, let's say here is o, so then here is the line that connects the two things. B would be somewhere over here. So A to O would be this vector here that takes us from there to there. And then O to B would be this vector that takes us from O to B. So we can see from this diagram, I've drawn B halfway in between A and O. We can see that A to O is in the opposite direction of O to B and has twice the length. So if a to o were a negative scalar multiple of o to b, then that would mean that when the particle travels from a to b, yes, o is in the same straight line, but it's not along the path from a to b. It will not go through o as we're going from a to b. Okay, so we can write up a little conclusion now. For part b, we're trying to work out the speed of the stone. So to work out the speed, we need to use distance over time. Let's work out the vector a to b. a to b is going to be a to o plus o to b. So that will be 24, 10 plus 12, 5, which will be 36, 15. And then the magnitude of a to b would be the square root of 36 squared plus 15 squared, and that would be 39. So this is the distance in meters. We have the time as four seconds. So then we can do 39 meters divided by the four seconds, and we get the speed of 9.75 meters per second.